Okay. Okay, hello and welcome back everyone. I'm Ann DeVere and this is Turn Your Show Into Cash. Today is all about making the camera love you. Yep, you have control over it. How cool is that, right? <laughs> Make the camera love you. It's all about how you show up. And uh, um, so far what we've done is we've identified your style we've identified the role you'll be taking the reporter guest expert show host and uh, journalist and we also in module three we talked about the blueprint of your show like what do you what do you want in your show the format of it and who are the guest experts and who who is your ideal audience so we've covered all that and then we went into your core message in module four then we we went into uh the scripting speaking in sound bites and, and in module five so basically we are prepared to get on camera at this point now if you haven't had a chance to go through everything don't worry because this is a process it's not a it's not a one-day thing it's not a one-hour thing it's a process it's about practicing uh, speaking in sound bites. It's about practicing, you know, uh, fine tuning your message. And today is about practicing showing up on camera, knowing how to use the camera. And uh, having said that, uh, those of you who are in the program and uh, your homework that you got, it was Jodina St. John, the host of Access to Experts, and uh, teaching you how to sit. And interact with the camera and uh, the vocal trainings and also there was a lot of information about uh, you know what to wear what not to wear I am going to cover that there will be the overview of it but today I'm going to actually dive in a little bit with some of my expertise this is a extra that's that wasn't even in the homework but it will be when we get done with this one I'm going to talk about uh, uh, how to bring the get best out of your guest experts what makes a great show host and what makes a great guest expert okay so if you're ready we are going to talk about how to make the camera love you and it's all about you all right so here we're gonna go over the shoulder and now okay so Basically, the most important rule to remember, and you're going to be seeing this message over and over again, get out of your head and get into your heart. The head replaces, the heart attracts. And that's the first thing you want to remember. No matter what message you have put together and all the homework you've done, all the bullet points you've put together, the sound bites you've put together, all the practice, all of that goes away when you're on camera. You get set up. You tapped into your heart, and that's it. Everything you know will fall into place. This is where you get out of your head, because if you're in your head, you're not focusing on what's happening. If you're in your head, you're too much into thinking about what you're going to say instead of intuitively responding to your guests, intuitively responding to your show host. So this is what we're going to talk about. So the most important rule, once the camera rolls, just be yourself. Tap into the essence. Remember, you're the expert. You know the information you want to share. You know, you, you know what uh, what's happening all around you. And you know, I'm I'm seeing a message, uh, Barbara. I believe that we have Aziza who's trying to join in. I keep seeing a message. So, Barbara is not there. Okay. So, next step. So what makes a great show host? We're going to start with that. How do you bring the best out of your guest expert? The first thing you need to do is remember that it's a conversation. What would you say is really important when you're having a conversation with somebody? It's about being interested in them. What are they saying? Have you ever talked with somebody where you were talking with them and you could see they were not paying any attention to you because they were too busy thinking about what they were going to say? Well, that shows up on camera. When your guests are watching you, you know, when, when your audience is watching you and your guest is interacting with you, you need to be into what they're saying, really paying close attention because then you're engaging your guest expert and you're also engaging your audience. So. Be a good listener. 
That's it. Does it sound familiar? Of course it does. We're always being told, be a good listener. That's the most important thing you can do. Pay attention to what people are saying. Then you will know how to respond to what they're saying. You'll have questions you want to ask for clarification. Get it? Same thing that happens in person happens on camera. Now, one very important thing. People get stuck with this a lot. When you are in studio and you are interviewing somebody, you should be looking at your guest. It's like watching a conversation between two people. The camera is there, but the audience is watching the two of you interact. So you should be looking at your guest. If you're constantly looking at your camera and talking to your guest, it's a disconnect. Okay? It would be like uh, there are three people standing there talking to each other, and, and you're looking at the person you're not talking to. You're looking at the third person while you're asking a question of the other one. Doesn't sound good, does it? Doesn't feel good either. So a lot of times, uh, you know, you'll see people just because they know the camera is there, they're like, yes, okay, yeah, okay. And they're constantly interacting with the camera. And what that does, it actually, there's a disconnect between the guest and there's a disconnect between the audience because you're not really paying attention to either one of them. Okay, so pay attention to your guests, interact with them, and every so often you turn around and address the audience. And, you know, I really love what you just said, and here's why. And the same way you would have, you know, interaction with someone with a third party that's standing there while you have a deep conversation with, with the person you are, okay? Same thing applies. Just be courteous and remember that rule. Just work with the person that you're talking to. When you are online, always look at the camera lens. Now, this can take a little bit of uh, practicing because when looking at the camera lens, it, it, people get a little bit uncomfortable. It's hard to focus. A really good thing you can do is picture the person you're talking to. Think of your ideal audience. Think of your most profitable customer. Think of the person you are talking to. You have a vision of them. Remember, we, we talked about your ideal customer, your most profitable customer, your ideal audience. Whatever the vision is that you have, is it a man, is it a woman? Just have a visual of them. And if you need a photo to remind you who they are, by all means, get a photo. You can look online if you don't have an actual person who is your ideal client. You need to have a visual of who you're talking to. Remember, there is a person on the other side that's watching you. It's a one-on-one -on -one conversation. Even if there are a million people watching you, it's still a one-on-one -on -one conversation. Even if you're in a room full of 100 people, every word you say, each person takes it and interprets it as to how they feel about what you're saying. It's always a one-on-one -on -one conversation. So if you focus on who it is that you really want to connect with, you will be congruent. You will be attracting the person you want to talk to. You will get across the points you want to get, get across. And so now one important trick that I do to stay focused on the camera, besides you know thinking about what I want to say and who I'm talking to, I actually put the camera in front of my monitor like right now i am sitting in front of the my in front of my monitor and the background behind my camera is the you know the zoom we're using zoom right now is is the root zoom frame so this way i'm looking at the camera while looking at what's happening on zoom so i can see that now, if you are using one of the, the smaller cameras that sits on top of your monitor, what you can do is take the, the person you're talking to that's framed, put their face directly below where the lens is. So what happens then is that while you're looking at the lens, you can also see them. Our, our eyes are amazing. They can take in so much more than just what we're focused on. So you'll be able to see them, you'll be able to see them interacting, you'll be able to see them smiling, you, you know, and, and that's what really fuels us. You know, then all of a sudden the camera lens kind of disappears because we get used to just looking through the lens at, at what's behind it. So practice this one because when you are doing online interviews, this is really crucial. More often than that, people are actually they're, they're looking down at the person they're talking to because 
it's down there. Now, this doesn't look very good, does it? I mean, there's a disconnect, right? I'm looking at you, but you're not looking at me, right? Okay. That's what it feels like. It is so a lot of people do that, okay? So having said that, I'm spending a lot of time on it because this is really, 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 really important because you want to always have that connection. So now, let's see. We're going to go to the next point. And if you have some questions about this, by the way, just, you know, put it in the chat and we'll take a look at it later. And when you are wrapping up your, um, your interview, always ask your guests for final thoughts. More often than that, I find the best nuggets at that point because as we do an interview, and, and by the way, assuming that you have already uh, followed what we, we've taught in the previous module, when you know, you're asking a question, what are some of the misconceptions people have? What are some of the things they should know? Assuming you're following that format, okay? So there's a disconnect. Now, but when you're wrapping up, just to stay connected and really, you know, take it out with a bang, you ask them, you know, what is, what is it something that we really should know? Do you have any final thoughts? And something about asking this question, it brings out the best content at the end, like some of the best nuggets come up, and you always leave with a high note. People walking away with a solid nugget because when they know at the end of it that you know they get you're wrapping up so they it's the succinct sound bites that people can walk away with it works every time you'll see just practice this one and you'll see amazing things happen with that all right so here is just engaging your audience remember that you are the voice of your audience you're not just talking you know, you're not just interviewing the guest expert. You know, to, to keep your guest expert engaged, you have to pay attention to them. But you have an audience there. How do you stay engaged with your audience? Well, the thing you have to remember is you are the voice of your audience. So the questions you have um, in advance, you need to be prepared because of the topic. But remember that as they're talking, as they're describing the questions that come up within you, if you focus on who your audience is, you will automatically know what questions to ask for clarity. And you will know how to reiterate what they're saying so you can relate it to your audience. Okay? Very important. This is something you, you have to practice, right? As you're listening to people, remember, again, if you bring in a third party, like if you had a third friend sit, you know, in a group, you're talking to one person, they say something, and this other friend is new to the one you're talking to, and you would turn around and explain to them what this person means. So if they're walking in a conversation, you would turn around and explain why this conversation is going on and how it relates to them, right? Same thing, same idea. I hope this is, I hope this is clear. If it's not, ask the questions, I go over it again. You always want to keep in mind, you always want to look at your audience as the third person who's interacting with you, okay? So what is your audience looking for? You know, what information are they looking for? What questions would they have? And uh, also, to make this easier on yourself, ask your viewers to send in questions in advance. You know your topic, when you're going to be interviewing somebody, ask them, hey, this is who my guest expert is going to be. What is the, what is the most important question you have about this? So what is the question you have? The one question that you would ask. So people will send you questions and you can actually, it makes it a lot easier for you to, to figure out what you want to ask. So what happens then is when you're doing an interview, it's a combination of honoring your guest and uh, including some of the information they want to deliver at the same time you have to be mindful of your audience what is the information they're looking for you're the guy in the middle you're the gal in the middle okay you're the broker of information once you once you own this position you understand that it's not just interviewing somebody it's about bringing everybody in and uniting it that's what makes a great show host and Oprah is a great example of how she does that you know when she's interviewing a guest we feel like she's tapping tapping into what we're thinking she's asking the questions that we're thinking that's because she knows her audience know your audience things fall into place and a little bit of practice you'll do great okay so now we're going to go into the guest expert I, we've actually been uh, 
auditioning for guest experts and contributors and uh, uh, placing experts on t TV shows, introducing them to producers for quite some time, and actually put together a whole training on this, on, you know, uh, what are we looking for guest experts? Maura Sodden is one of our partners who is a producer and a, uh, and a casting director. She actually also created a, a video on this that, you know, what are producers looking for? I'm, I'm going to give you the overview. These are five things that we're looking for. So to be a sought after guest expert, you really have to understand the position of the producer. The producer has to produce great content. Okay. Now, in this case, if you're the producer yourself, um, you understand you want to bring in people that your viewers are going to watch. But guess what? A TV show producer has a lot writing on it. They have to bring in guests that actually bring in the audience and are, you know, they're, it's all about making money. If they have viewers, people come. If they don't have viewers, sponsors go, okay? So they have to deliver a show that makes money. The program needs to be engaging, and, you know, it has to grow the viewership. That's the producer's role. It's that simple. They can't do that. They're fired. So what is it that you're going to bring to the table as a guest expert to make their job easy, okay? They have to bring in dynamic guest experts. So you have to be a dynamic guest expert. It's that simple. If you're not, you will never come back. If you're not, they will never refer you to somebody else. So how do you become a dynamic guest expert? I'm going to get, tell you some of the things that we're looking for. When we're auditioning for access to experts, we're looking for the video quality. So when you're putting your sizzle reel together to send this to, to somebody so they can see uh, how you show up, how you deliver content, be mindful of your video quality. You know, use the tools that you're learning over here to create your content and so you look professional. Okay, so appearance, hair, makeup, take some time to look professional. You know, you're, you're doing a meeting uh, with, <laughs> with somebody that's going to give you a job, basically. That's what you're looking for. You want this person to choose you. You have to look the part, okay? Content. You have to make sure you have your hook, body, and call to action succinct, okay? You need to be able to deliver this in one minute or less because I got news for you. The producers are going to sit there and watch your videos uh, for hours. Uh, I can't tell you how many people, when they're auditioning, they send me links to their YouTube channels. Like, I'm going to go and scour their YouTube channels, find videos that, that are going to be working. You don't do that. Choose If you're going to send them to your website, choose a video and tell them exactly which minute to watch. So if this is the video, and um, at minute 6, 30 seconds, that's, you know, watch that part to get what I'm saying if you don't have a short video. Do that. Make it easy. If you don't, then then you are really shooting yourself in the foot. Foot. Okay. So your uh, vocal quality. Whatever your voice is, it's fine. It's fine. Just be comfortable with who you are. Okay. Uh, we also have Charles. <laughs> okay. Be, be comfortable with who you are and speak in your natural voice. It's that simple. And in your training area, Jodina St. John gave you some really good points on how to, how to get in your natural voice. There's some really good exercises. So please watch that and practice. She has some really, really good exercises. And she's a vocal coach. So she knows what she's talking about. But be in your natural voice. Don't judge yourself. And actually, the voice that you hear inside your head is quite different than the voice you hear on, you know, uh, on when you're uh, playing back the video. So whatever it is, own it. Get used to it. You can't change it that quickly you can work on it the changes can be made but don't wait until you you have a transformation to to get out there and share your share your knowledge your body language your facial expressions most of the time uh you're going to be basically from the waist up a lot of times it's going to be head and shoulders so your face has to be delivering the message you have to be enthusiastic so people are engaged by what you're saying if you're if you're just well let me tell you about this you know what? It takes about a few seconds where people are going to walk away. If you're not excited about what you're doing, if you're not feeling the emotions, nobody else is going to either. Okay? So very, very important. Those are the things that we're looking for in our audition videos. So 
Now going quickly over here, um, the very the very thing is uh, know how to make the camera love you. Is it a five points? I'm going to go quickly. You need to dress for success, and I'll, I'll have a pointers on this quick, you know, in just a second. And um, you need to have confident body language. Again, Jodina has given you some really cool pointers there. Speak in your natural voice. Look comfortable on camera. How you look comfortable on camera? Get comfortable on camera. It's that simple. The more you use it, the more comfortable you will be and the more confident you will come across. And be sure to engage uh, your host and your TV audience as a guest expert. You want to make sure you're interacting with both. Okay. So, again, can't stress this enough. Get out of your head and get into your heart. Okay. So, let's see now. Speak in sound bites. All right. Great guest experts know exactly what to say and how to say it in a short period of time, okay? Uh, they know how to deliver the message for maximum impact. And, uh, oh, this is really important, okay? If you're gonna be on a new show, most new shows, they go anywhere from like one to three minutes. So you better know how to deliver your message in one minute. You hook, body, and call to action. And most talk shows, they are, uh, they are, okay. I, I'm I'm getting I'm getting messages popping up. <laughs> Most talk shows uh, they have let's see they have uh, three three to six minutes. So if you prepare your message in three minutes, you will be able to deliver content in the way it's supposed to be. Okay, so let's see. Okay. Uh, Point number three, be adaptable. Okay, great guest experts know how to how to tie their message to the audience. So before you go on a show, find out who the audience is and make your content relevant. Make it fresh. Stay current on what's going on. Can you tie it in with, with what's happening in the news at, at that particular time? Uh, because there's nothing that's going on that can't be tied to what you're doing. You know, everything, everything we do, uh, every problem we have is either relationship, health, or money. So no matter what you are teaching, what you're doing, you can always find a way to tie it in. Okay, so I've talked about this before in, in creating the message. You may want to go back and watch that again. Um, check the news feeds. You know, there's a lot going on there. You're not the only one who's, uh, who talks about this. So check the news feeds and see what's going on and create content that's relevant. Even if you're just creating 30-second video tips to put on your website to see what's going on. Others in your industry, what are they zeroing on? You'll get a lot of great ideas. Okay, um, next. Point number four out of the five keys, be camera ready. Great gets at great experts appear on camera on short notice. And guess what? What I'm teaching you, how to set up your home studio, this puts you at the top of the list because one of the things that uh, most TV shows want is somebody who can actually be ready very quickly. I know some of the people we've trained, um, they're, they're listed on um, uh, with, with TV producers. If something breaks in the news, get this person because they can appear quickly. So if you have if you have your home studio set up and all you have to do is flip on the lights and you're good to go, you can say, look, you know, give me 15 minutes and I'm ready. When you're sending in your reel, when you're connecting with them, your camera ready. Hey, you know, have your own home studio and, and be ready to go live in minutes. And finally number five, BYF. Bring your followers, bring your followers. Every TV show wants viewers. So if you have followers on social media, tell your people, I'm gonna be on this show. Because I tell you, the ones I'm gonna be promoting are the ones who are promoting the show. Every producer is gonna be that way. So you wanna become a treasured guest expert? Start bringing your people. Spread the word about where you are, what you're doing. These are the important points. Just keep this in mind and you'll do just great. Okay, so now we're going to move into quickly in, uh, on, you know, how to look and sound great on camera. I just want to make a few points. Again, Jodine has done a great job in training, but I'm just going to keep the, uh, look at some highlights over here. So you probably have heard this a thousand times, and I'm going to say it's a thousand one time, okay? The study that was done at UCLA, um, Albert Mehrabian, he did, he did a study where they actually decided that 55% of how people perceive us is our body language, the physiology, how we interact, how we smile, how we move. 
So that has a huge impact on how people see us in, you know, when we're communicating with them. And 38% is our tonality. So are you excited when you're talking about something? Are you, you know, are you, what is it, how are you coming across your energy? So how you sound and how you look, your body language is a big part of how people perceive the message you're sending. And uh, again, Jodina has, you know, she actually shows the same sentence several different ways. Just by, when you change your tonality, it can, be, can become completely different. Same words, you just have to change your tone. It becomes a completely different impact. Uh, it has a completely different impact. Same sentence. Okay? And only 7% of those words. So. Only 7% are words, but if you choose the right words at the right time and you put in your tonality and your body language together just the right way, you can make magic happen, okay? So make sure you pay attention to that. So how do you look and sound great on camera? Well, you need to make sure you're dressing for success, watching your body language, your vocal quality, and make sure you have makeup on that actually looks great on camera. And uh, in our, in our uh, members area, is that Dale Buck has actually uh, some great step-by-step -step makeup applications. So be sure to watch that. It's for men and women. So 93% of what you say and how people perceive you is all about how you look and sound. So you want to mess with this? Do it at your own peril. But I would say go ahead and practice. Okay. So again, this is Jodina. I've been talking about her. She and there's like four, three or four different videos up there. On one is on uh, the body language. Another one is your vocal tone, and and finally on how to dress. And also there are two videos with Dale Buck, she's a Hollywood makeup artist. It's like 20, 25 minute uh, videos. One on women step-by-step -step makeup application for for the camera and there's also one for men step-by-step -step makeup ap application for the camera now we're going to talk about what to wear a lot of people ask me what do i wear and i can tell you that when uh, especially when we're doing interviews in a studio everybody comes to the studio dressed in a suit well maybe appropriate but it may not so let me ask you this when you're on camera you want to be dressed for your audience you want to look your best but you still want to be relating just like when you see the videos you know on commercials with a doctor uh, wearing a white coat and a stethoscope is he with a patient at that moment heck no but the outfit is there because right away we identify him as a doctor it builds credibility you get this so here's an exercise for you if this plumber shows up at your door does he look looks apart is he credible Absolutely. What if the plumber showed up at the door wearing a three-piece suit? What are you going to think? Number one, he's not a plumber. Plumber, if he is a plumber, I'm sure he's going to be paying for that suit, right? It just there's a disconnect. So when, think about it. When you're on camera, what does your audience expect? And what is the image you want to project? You want to be yourself. So if you're a casual kind of gal and, uh, or guy and, uh, you know, you are working with business owners, you don't necessarily have to put on a suit if you don't put on a suit on Tata every day, but do business casual. Okay, like right now, you know, I actually... A lot of times I just wear short sleeves, you know, because I'm, I'm more comfortable with not wearing a jacket a lot of times. So people are like, well, you should be wearing a jacket. Why? What difference does it make to you? But here's the other part. The way I dress is the way people expect. If they don't like me without a jacket, they're not going to like me when they meet me. Okay? So use your clothing, uh, what you wear, as a way to connect with the right people you want. So it could be a very powerful tool. The image you're projecting, how do you want to be seen by your people? Okay, so if you're not a stuffy kind of person, don't be a stuffy kind of person. Okay, so having said that, one of the things that I can tell you is that when you're on camera, you don't want to be wearing plaid, you don't want to be wearing stripes because they move as you move, especially on webcams. You know, uh, the, the one with the stripes, it's going to look like there are snakes crawling all over the place. You don't want to be using stripes. So what you do want to do is use solid colors. Even if, you wanna, if you're going to be wearing black, make sure that you have at least an accent. You know, I recommend really staying away from solid black and solid white because it just blends in okay the the fine point uh, of what you're wearing if it just it it's not there the shadows and things they just they just don't show up and okay and men the same thing applies to you 
okay, where the you know grays and the natural colors and things like that. Uh, don't be wearing the really flashy, you know. The colors that the, the ties that have every color in the rainbow in them it looks like somebody just threw a salad at your chest you know it just doesn't feel good okay and especially on webcam it just you you want to be you want to be uh have you want to have people looking at you instead of what you're wearing now here's the body language this is a really important one i'm just going to go through a few bullet points here look at look at this woman i'm going to go full screen so you get the full impact of it Take a look at her body language. Look at her facial expressions. Look at her smile, okay? So let's see, what, what are we looking for, okay? Posture. You wanna be looking confident and competent. You know, she's not slouching over, she's standing up, she's happy to see you, okay? Gestures, natural and inviting. When you're greeting somebody that you really like, how do you do it? You wanna make them feel welcome, right? Big smile, hands extended, Okay, and energy, you want to be magnetic, magnetic and captivating. How you smile at somebody, your eyes, the way they twinkle when you look at them, they're going to feel welcome and, or not. So be, keep that in mind. You know, think of it as a, you know, an, a special, a very special guest that, that's, that you're meeting. How would you feel? Okay, eyes, make sure you are maximizing con connection. Because that's when you build trust. If you're not looking at somebody, they don't trust you. Okay, where are you looking? Who are you looking at? All right. So having said that, I'm going to come back here and voila. Covered a lot on how to make the camera love you. Okay. So having said that, we're going to go ahead and open it up and take some questions and answers and see what we got there. Now, I, I believe we have some people that, is everybody on? Barbara is missing. Okay, just wanted to make sure. I, I, I kept seeing uh, the names pop up. I wasn't sure whether people were in or not. <laughs> it was actually distracting for me. So, okay, um, let's go. We're going to go full screen here. Who, who wants to go first? I need to see some hands waving. Nobody? Ah, uh, hold on a second. Okay, I see Jules. Okay, Jewel, do you need to unmute yourself? And there you wait, hold on. I want to get you a full screen here. Um, speaker mode. Okay, you are on, Jules. Go ahead. Okay, so look, just let me check that my makeup looks good, that my posture's good. I'm sitting on the edge of my chair. I've got a reasonable amount of light coming onto me. Uh, look, my kind of uh, thing, I don't I'm, we're six weeks in now into the course, and um, I find the information really, really useful. But I've also been t thinking, and so too of my team here, been wondering about what's going to be Shine's style, what will be our approach. Do we want to do uh, live stuff? Do we want to do interviews? Do we want them to be in a um, studio type setting, or do we want it to be a bit more kind of rough and tumble? Uh, do we want it to have more of a you know, um, a vlogger kind of uh, approach instead of a professional studio kind of approach. Um, so I'm just sort of wondering what your thoughts are on that, about kind of extending beyond the look of a, of a, of a studio. Okay, well, the answer is all of the above. Here, here's the good news. The, the format of your show, you can be anything you want it to do. And as a matter of fact, I'm going to be uh, taking some time with each one and we're going to be doing individual, you know, uh, behind the scenes coaching. So having said that, now, um, when you, you're going to be having segments on your show where you're interviewing people. You, yeah. you, you're going to be at an event, let's say. You can easily interview some of the people you're traveling with, like, you know, the trips that you're going on across the globe with all the amazing people. So you conduct interviews there. You can also have an office, you know, in your office, set up a studio in your office where people will come in. You will be, you can interview them. But also you can have your clients come in where you're working with your clients one-on-one -on -one and recording that. And that could be taken out as a, you know, as a, you know, in experiential segment within your show. Mm -hmm. um, doing what you do, you can actually record um, thoughts uh, that pop up as you're 
traveling somewhere or taking a walk on a beach or whatever you're doing because you're inspiring people. It's all about empowering them so you could have thoughts of the day or things that come up. So what happens then is you have choices. My suggestion is create your library different kinds of videos, you know, do your interviews, do your video tips. Uh, you're going to be doing individual coaching and, you know, play, uh, playing different kinds of games with people, whatever, you know, because you're, you're very lively with what you're doing. You're interviewing different people, doing exercises, build a library and catalog them. So what happens then is that you can decide, okay, well, today we're going to be taking the interview from this person, and this is all pre-recorded. We're going to do an interview with this person, and this experiential exercise goes with that topic. And then here are some questions that people are asking, you know, the Q&A. You can, you can just actually do a training where people are sending in questions. Just do a Q&A show. People send you questions in advance. You record the whole thing, and you can have individual uh, questions and answers that you can use. You, you don't have to even have them to get edit them individually and put them in your library. Here's the question, here's the answer. So all you have to do is take that segment and put it within. Now, what this does, and next week we're going to be doing uh, uh, how to use XSplit. The beauty of XSplit is that you can easily put each, each video that you have, each component, into different slots. All you have to do is click, 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 and XSplit will record the whole thing for you. So you can literally produce a TV show in no time at all, all by yourself with minimal editing. It's, uh, so I'm giving you a long answer. But again, you want to have everything that you're doing all the different ways and putting it in there. Now, it does a couple of things. It keeps your show exciting because you're doing, you know, different kinds of, uh, you know, uh, interviews. You're doing, you're doing mm -hmm. different kinds of uh, subject matter, things like that. So it keeps the show exciting. It's not just you sitting there talking to your audience. And because you can actually take excerpts when you're you know, in person or when you're on location, like you're getting ready to go to Kenya, what an opportunity to have some great footage from there. You know, take some of your, you know, some of the footage that you have when you went to Antarctica. So put that in there. And you have all kinds of ways of doing it. And next week you'll see how it will all tie in together. But that would be my suggestion. But yes, you should have a studio in your office because what happens, you get a thought or you can actually get your team members in. You can do, you know, brainstorming. You can record all that. It just, what you want to do is create situations where you're creating videos and just building your library. Because when you have, when you have stock, you can do anything you want with it. Make sense? That's, that is a really great answer. And uh, one of the things um, that I really found valuable, or oh, all of it was valuable, um, but one thing in particular was the whole thing of audience engagement, about getting them to send in questions. Because uh, there's, there's, I mean, there's a, for me, it's always about being relevant to an audience and to create, you know, because Shine is about community. So how do we best serve and how do we involve the maximum number of people? And um, in terms of the design of the show, I've been pretty well, that's what's been emerging was, you know, little segments, exactly the way you laid it out was the kind of the way my thinking has been going. So really appreciate the answer, thanks. Wonderful, well, one more thing I wanna share with you. When we, when we started first doing the Access to Expert, which I'm actually gonna be engaging again, what I did was I put in actually a, a ballot that people could send in, nominate people to be interviewed. So this is really huge because think about ah. this. Right. Yeah, if I have people, you know, like, you know, give them like five or ten names or whatever, if, you know, you want to be specific, and then you have uh, 100 people asking to interview one particular person, you can call them and say, look, my audience is asking for you, you know, please give me an interview. They're not going to say no. When are you going to go back and, you know, tell them, I tried to get him and he wouldn't come on our show? That's going to make them look bad. Okay, so there are all kinds of ways of getting people to cooperate, but I would say that because then uh, your audience will tell you who they want to watch, and when you give them what they want, they will come back and watch, and they will spread the word. Great. Excellent. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, let's see. Who is next? Okay. Any, many, many more? 
<laughs> oh, Tony, you are it. Okay, lucky me. Um, I think one of the questions that I have is about how is it that we support and encourage our guest experts to be camera ready and good on camera? What, what, what have you found works for you when you've got someone coming in? Okay, first, um, I, find, I teach them what I know very, very, very quickly. So the, the most important thing you can do for them is make sure they look good on camera. So uh, one of the things that I actually do is literally I have them pick up their laptop and walk around the room and find a backdrop that works and the light that works best because most of them are not going to be having uh, their studio set up like you are. So that's the first thing. Make sure you expect to do that. Okay. And if you present it in a way, look, I, you know, I want to make sure both of us look great on this. Uh, so let's find a perfect place the way you look fabulous on camera. That's one. The other is in advance, you want to, you want to prepare them because most of them are going to be ready to do uh, webinars. So that means they want to be speaking for 40 minutes or 20 minutes, depending on how long it is. And you're not going to want to give them 20 minutes. So what you want to do is prepare them to, to give you a 15 minute interview and a three minute interview. This is really crucial. So uh, during the 15 minute interview, you want to follow the same format that I'm teaching you. Um, the points that they're gonna be making, what they're gonna be teaching, see if you can if you can kind of take it into like either is it a mistake that people want to avoid if you have some somebody in financial or in, uh in health that you know crew something crucial you know you could say these mistakes could be killing you these mistakes could be you know bankrupting you because that's something we're afraid of but a lot of times i would suggest kind of ask them what are some of the misconceptions people have about your type of products or your type of services about your product or, or what, you know, or what should they know? If you ask the question that way, you can actually get the answers from them. A lot of times what happens is that they have certain questions they want you to ask. They will send you, a lot of them are ready, they will send you and say, you know what, this is really good and this is where I'm going to be asking the question. Because most of them, they already have the information. And uh, if you tell them, this is the way I want to ask you, so it's more conversational. And by the way, you don't have to stick to mistakes, mis misconceptions, what they should know. Uh, but I want you to start with that. I want you to find your own style. But if you start with that, you're going to see what feels most comfortable for you. Like for me, misconceptions works really well. When I'm doing my interviews, you know, I said, well, you know, what are, Tony, what are some of the misconceptions people have about working with an executive coach? Then you go, well, they think it's going to be this, they think it's that, they think it's that. And then I'll say, well, well, what else should they know when they decide to work with a coach? You see how this is like flowing right into it? Mm -hmm. Because you're going to give me everything I'm looking for. And most of the time, the information that they send to you is going to be something you can use within that format. So they will send you information. And the, the thing here is that I find if I'm respectful of their content and what they want to, what they want to get across, I'll ask them, what, what's really important for you to get across? And they will tell me, you know, like as long as I'm respectful of what they want to get across at the same time, you know, what my audience wants, uh, they're good with it. And by the way, they're, they want to have an impact. They want you to uh, have them back again. They, they want your audience to want them. Okay, That's, it's a common goal. So if you tell me, you know what, I find this works really well with my audience. This is the way I usually get the information across to them. And these are some of the things they're looking for. They're like, oh, by all means. And most of the people you interview, uh, they're professionals you know they know how to take their content and deliver it in in several different formats it's not really that difficult a conversation but i would suggest start with what i'm teaching you um misconceptions uh, work really well and if you ask them at the end what else should we know you're going to have a really good content rich show so now when you're doing a 15 minute interview you want to you want to also ask them can you give me an example 
You know, if that wants to, to, wants to tell you uh, uh, what the problem is and what the solution is. So can you give me an example? And a lot of them have information. So they will, you know, they'll say, well, this is what you should do. And for example, one of my clients, this is what they were doing. And this is what we did. And here's the end result. Or if they don't have an actual example with a client, you can say, well, for example, if you're doing this, this could happen. Then they didn't actually make up an example, which is also okay because you're asking, well, how does that work? Can you give an example of what that looks like? And they will tell you because they already know how it would work you know, in their environment. So if you, do, if you ask it like that, not only are you going to be able to make sure the information they're delivering is in, is in a way your audience can understand. The, the problem a lot of people have is they are so used to a, explaining what they do. They're an expert at what they do, that they use verbiage that the common person doesn't understand, or they assume it's something simple the common person would understand. So you want them to reiterate what they're saying, and if they're not doing it within the example, then you reiterate it and say, oh, that's a very interesting example. So we could, if we're doing this, we could do that. That's how it would work. They go, oh, yeah, that's how it is, and then you can do this. So you want to be the buffer. You give them the opportunity to explain what it is in the example. Then if, it's, if you know, I mean, if you really tapped into your audience, you know what to ask. And you, then you can go and say, oh, I get it. This is, this is how it works. This is why it works. Thank you very much. That makes it really simple. Mm -hmm. And this engages your ad audience further. And if they understand more about the benefits of, you know, what this person is talking about, then they're going to want to be in touch with that person, which is what they ultimately want anyways. Your guest does what they want. Mm -hmm. So um, you have to be the diplomat. You have to be the buffer. You have to be, you know, uh, is, it, is this making it easier for you to figure out how all this works? Yeah, actually it does. It helps me. And actually... I don't know that I, I know you've said it before now that I hear you say it again. The thing about the 15 minutes and the three minutes, that actually takes a lot of pressure off because it feels to me at the moment, because it's new, that it's a lot to, to carry out an interview for, I don't know, 40 minutes, whatever. And so the 15 minutes feels a lot more manageable and, like I said, I'm, not, I'm sure that you have said it before because it sounded familiar once I heard it, but, you know, sometimes you've got to hear things more than once for it to really sink in. Yeah. Well, and uh, by the way, 15 minutes is a long time. And uh, the, the, the thing that I want to make sure I say it again with the three-minute interview, always do the three-minute interview after the 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. um, first, within the 15 minutes, there's going to be one point that's really, really important. Mm -hmm. And they will tell you which one is the most important point that they want to get across on the show. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the other is what happens a lot of times, you know, well, most of the time they know what, they, what, what needs to go to get across and they're usually right. But every so often I'll hear them say something like, Ooh, that's the one I want for the three minutes. You know, it gives me an opportunity to find something really juicy and really wonderful for your particular audience. And you say, you know what? I really love that. Can we focus on that? And they're going to say, of course. Yeah. You know, if, and if they say no, then you figure out how to, how to use the other one. But you're not going to have a problem with it. Now, um, the, the three-minute one, the reason you want to do the three-minute one separately is because it's going to make it a lot easier to create your show. So what happens is that you take the three-minute and you put it within your 30-minute show segment, okay? And at the end of it, you say, look, this is so much great information. Thank you for joining us. I wish we had more time here. But, you know, then you turn around to the audience and say, look, you should, you should watch the in-depth interview I did with our guest. You know, go to our members area and we'll watch that. So you're going to send your people to your membership site. Remember, that's part of your engagement. You know, they go to your free member area and they find out more about all the other interviews, all the other things you're doing. Then they're going to want to go ahead and, and sign up for the $9 or $19, whatever it is, membership. You know, and don't get too carried away with, with how much you're going to charge for the membership. Think Netflix. I mean, what are they charging? $10 a month, $9 a month? You know, that's, that's just for them to get access to certain content. That's not really accessing your program. 
okay? So uh, I find people like, why do I want to charge $9? I should be charging $97. I'm like, yeah, but your program may be, you know, membership. But this is just for people to get access to the in-depth interviews you're doing and maybe get access to some of the content or the, uh, the downloadable, excuse me, <clears throat> The downloadable, the PDFs or videos and things like that that your, your guests are making available. That's what the smaller one, smaller amount like $9 or $19 a month is for. That's, you know, to get more access, okay? So that makes it easier. Yes. What sort of frequency do you think that we should be doing these interviews to, to make it compelling to, to sign up for a member's area, for instance? Oh, that's, that's, a, that's a tough one. Uh, I don't... It's not really the interviews that's going to be making it. The interviews, uh, they play a role in bringing in uh, fresh content as well as bringing in an audience that you don't really have access to. So if you choose your experts, you know, uh, strategically, you can actually do a lot. You can actually do a lot with it, okay? Uh, when you're first starting out, you, you don't go to the thought leaders in your industry and say, come and be on my show when you don't really have an audience to share them with. When you're first starting out, you want to see who loves you, okay? This is really important. These are people, you know, or follow your money. Whose programs are you in that they have a huge audience? You go interview them, and because you're their student, they're going to promote you because, hey, I want to promote my students. I'm proud to show my work, you know? So go to the ones you, whose programs you signed up for and say, I want to interview you, and can you tell your people you're on my TV show? And guess what? For them to send out an email saying, hey, one of our students is launching their TV show. You guys should be interviewed on it. You know, they're going to talk about it. So those are the people you, you, you go to first. And then um, take a look at some of the people who want to be interviewed by you. Everybody's going to want to be interviewed by you, okay? Um, there are going to be some people who don't have a following. They're, they're good at what they do, but they don't have a following. They don't have a name. So if you interview them in the beginning, you're not going to do anything for yourself or for them. You don't have a following. They don't have a following. So who's going to watch the show? You know, somebody like that, you say, you know what? Why don't, why don't we schedule you like six months from now? Once I build a following, then I'll, I'll love to bring you to my audience. Then it will do you, you know, it will really serve you well. And guess what's going to happen during those six months? They're going to be promoting you because they're excited about being on your show and they're excited about you. So they're going to be sharing you with, with everybody they come across with. Then when you bring them on, it's going to be win-win all around. Then, then at the same time, um, the thought leaders who you really don't know, because you can actually identify people you don't know and say, you know, I want to interview so-and-so on my show, but you don't know them. So give yourself some time. Following what we're doing, you should have a nice audience within six months. So then you book them on your show because when you contact them and say, here's what, here's, uh, what I'm doing, here are some of the people who have been on my show, and you know, they're going to recognize some of the names that are there, and they say, oh, if they've been on your show, I'm going to be on your show. You need to build credibility. That's how you do it. Okay? You have to be very strategic. Is that they're giving you uh, – oh, you didn't have the frequency. I, I went off on that because I, I just want to share that with you. The frequency, it doesn't, it doesn't really make a difference because people aren't going to come there just to watch them. They're going to also come there because you're teaching your content. You're going to be answering some of their questions. You're going to be putting out the videos. You're going to be putting out the tools in there that they can download. So mm -hmm. it's, it's a combination of different things that's there. But you should, you should have interviews, uh, you know, pretty much every show you do, you should have interviews on it. Okay, so just think, think what, what can you put in your members area that would be of added value. Okay. okay. Um, Julian, I, can I'm sorry. Yeah, I, um, can I just okay. clarify uh, one thing? I apologize. Just one thing. When you say okay. you should have, so are you saying that, the sh so what are you thinking about the frequency of the show then? If you're not thinking, I was kind of correlating interviews and show together. Um, oh, the, the, frequency, the frequency of the show, I, I think once a week is really good. Now, the good thing about it is that you don't have to be producing a show once a week. All you have to do is just go, like, go, go to an event and interview 10 different speakers at the same time and put it in your library and create a bunch of things. Just cre put, build your library. Uh, or you can go in the studio and interview six or eight people at one time and just use each one of them at a different time or two of them in each show. 
Okay. Um, I know that working with the, uh, these three women, they're in different cities. They're in different cities, so they're going to get together in one city like once a month, once every two months, and just record a bunch of bunch of shows at the same time. We're in the library, so it, it doesn't make a difference because it's all pre-recorded. Got it. Thank you. That helps. Okay. You're welcome, Julian. You, you had a question. Uh, there's um, um, just some thoughts, uh, not really a question. Um, we're doing a lot of research at the moment around membership sites. Um, and just on uh, the pricing of those sites, some of the some of the most popular and commercially successful are between seventeen to nineteen dollars uh, per month. And um, also, in, in terms of, um, I just had the I just was just thinking that um, you know Shine is a community, and we're very much a global community. So I'd be really open to any of you having your shows promoted out through Shine. So the whole notion of leverage, you know, that so many of the skills that you have, that skills we want to be um, introducing and offering to our, uh, you know, our community. And we have some plans and strategies to massively grow that. So to be able to, have, you know, have links to your shows through our website or through our membership platform would be something that we'd be more than happy to, uh, you know, to pick up a conversation with you guys about that. Well, um, guess what? We're, that's going to happen because we're all going to be collaborating and, and cross-promoting. Right. That's, that's, that's a big part of what's happening here. Right. And right. we're actually launching the, the reporter agency where everybody's going to be collaborating as well as the yeah. GPN TV. So everybody's going to be on everybody's show. That's that's the whole thing here. We're going to be Perfect. Yeah, yeah, very happy to play that. Very happy yeah. to play that. Yeah, same here. Everybody's going to, you know, this, this. that's what this is about. Okay, so next. Okay, Aziza. All right, you are on. You're muted. You're, you're still muted. There we go. Yes. Hey, everyone. So, um, this whole thing about putting the whole show together, I'm really growing into it and I'm like really feeling very excited about what's coming out of it. And you see right now I'm trying to look at the camera. I don't think I'm looking at the camera. No, you're not. You're looking to the side, looking to the camera. Talk to me on the camera. Does this work if I look like that? It's so weird. I mean like, okay. So what's, what's happening for me is I actually got it that, you know, when I put in the show, I'm going to have all these segments that's coming together. So one of my challenge will be because I have been running these regular interviews with a lot of my uh, experts in my, you know, my mentors and my teachers and as well as some of my I mean, uh, friends, I have done these long interviews, like from 40 minutes to one hour, sometimes even past that. And they're all on, on YouTube. So right now, how do I, you know, what would you suggest that I go into to look at like shorter uh, to make it like to eight minutes, what would I have to look out for? Okay, so what I was for, first, the, the videos that you already have, you just have them. You know, you can put them in your members area. What I would suggest you do is go go watch the videos and find a segment that you really like. Maybe a three-minute, a five-minute segment, maybe a particular question you're asking that you really like, and just edit that out. And so what you can do then to set that up, you, you can, uh, you know, become the narrator. It's just like right now when I'm, when I'm showing up, say, okay, welcome, everybody. This is it. Today we're going to talk about this. And... Uh, recently, I did an interview with so and so, and one of the things we covered was this. I want you to watch that, and you're going to click, and that's going to play. So you basically become the narrator, okay? And you introduce different segments. This actually happens a lot when we, you know, here we're watching like Entertainment Tonight kind of shows, where there are the two hosts are interacting with each other, and they play a video, and then they go back and discuss what what they just watched on the video. Okay, so that that actually works really, really well. What you can do then is select a bunch of different interviews that go together. You can even have somebody else on the set sitting there with you where you can play the video and you say, well, that was a great point that she made or, you know, I really love the way he said that. And here's here's what, what I think about it. What do you think about it? So to, the two of you can discuss the point that we just made and that can become part of the show. Wow, I've never thought of that. I'm really was like, 
That means you're telling me that all my videos I've taken so far can become like reproduced for what we're doing right now. That's going to be so cool. Wow. <laughs> that, that, is, that is a very innovative way of looking at it. I think that's going to be very helpful. Probably I would want to, you know, uh, run through with you, uh, you know, one of the segments that how I'm going to be putting it together that will really support me in getting much more uh, crisp in my flow because then I can, I can see that I have got a lot of stuff. I just don't want them to overlap each other in an in a, in a awkward way. Yeah. Well, I'm, yeah, I, I'm, I'm going to be actually doing a strategy session with each and every one of you to, to really flesh out the format of your show and, and figure out how you're going to be using a different segment. We can discuss it at that time. You know, so we, you, what you want to do is get, take an inventory, everybody, take an inventory of all the videos that you have because everything that you have can be used. You know, you want, you want to itemize your library. What I would suggest you do is create a folder, you know, put whatever the, you know, the name of your show is, or you just put your name, all my videos, and then within there, create subfolders, okay? This is like interviews with experts. This is uh, uh, my, my random thoughts, and this one is uh, exercises or, you know, uh, seminar uh, stills or whatever, testimonials and things like that. So you, you have individual full folders within, within the main folder, and then when you're putting a show together, say, okay, I'm going to go to the expert interviews, I'm going to pick this out, and then I'm going to go to the exercises or the seminar, I'm going to put this out, I'm going to go to uh, the question of the week, I'm going to pull this out, and then you just put the three of them together, and there goes that one show. Make sense? Yeah. Yes. When you, when you have a when you have an itemized library, it becomes really easy to, to start creating your show. Wow, that sounds perfect. Okay. Thank you, so Thank you so much. You're welcome. Okay, so let's see. Who is next? Barbara, you are on. All right, thank you so much, Anne. Uh, I have to just thought of something. Um, speaking of videos, and I have produced those 26 episodes of a show, but it was with a co-host, so I'm thinking that I probably don't want to use that content. However, I'm thinking I could go on to YouTube or other uh, places where I find streaming video, find content that I thought I'd like to comment on, and maybe say, hey, I found something on YouTube, and I wanted to share this little clip with you and, and just tell you what my thoughts were about you know, how I perceived it or my perception or however you would want to word it. I don't know. And I saw two questions. One is that, can we do that? Is that, uh, do we violate anybody's rights by doing like a little editorial piece on grabbing a snippet? Um, and then the other thing is, uh, what are your thoughts on that as far as uh, creating content like that? Okay, my thoughts on it, I think, uh, I think it's, a, it's a great idea to, to look up content, but don't just take it and use it. You want to contact the person whose content it is and say, this is what I want to do. Can I, this is the, the segment I want to use, and I will give it full credit and let you know. Most often, they're going to say yes, I mean, unless you're going after somebody who's really big. Now, here's something really important, is uh, if you just take somebody's stuff without even saying anything, um, they can, on YouTube, they can actually take you, like, you know, copyright infringement, and they will ban you on YouTube, okay? You do it once, they ban your live streaming for three months. And you, and you, you don't even have to prove anything. They can just accuse you of it. If you're accused of it, you, you, get, you get punished. So make sure you don't just take stuff and use it. Make sure you, they send you an email. You have something in writing, not just, hey, yeah, sure, go use my stuff. Be very specific. This is a video I want to use, and this is where I'm going to use it. And make sure you talk about this is who it is, and this is what I like about it, and you give them full credit. Okay, so... Um, then the next question that comes up is, do you have some kind of a form or something that we can have that they could like fill out or sign and say, you know, you have the right to use that or? Yeah, I'm actually, I'm actually putting something together right now that all of you are going to be signing before I start promoting you and you and doing all, all that I'm going to do to create this TV show. <laughs> so, you, know, you, you can actually take the same one and use it. And yes, I am I'm putting together stuff. And keep in mind, okay, I'm going to say this now. 
I am not responsible legally for anything that you do. You have to make sure you do due diligence, you know, and make sure you do everything right on your own. I'm not a lawyer, okay? So just like disclaimer here. I'm not giving you legal advice. <laughs> <laughs> but I am I am creating one that uh, all of you are going to have to sign to give me full rights to promote you any way I want. Otherwise, I will not. You know, so uh, uh, yeah, you'll have access to it. You have access to what I'm creating. Excellent, excellent. Thank you. You're welcome. Let's see, who 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 do we have, gentlemen? Charles. Okay, you are on. Unmute yourself, please. Right, can you hear me? Uh, yes, there we go, loud and clear. Ste go, go, go back a little bit. Go back a little bit. Ste move away from the camera a little bit. We want to see more of you. <laughs> like this? Yes, better, okay. Um, so lately I've been, so far I've been doing a lot of preparation, uh, especially by categorizing the videos. Um, you know, I realized that, wow, I have, different speaking engagement uh, and video that I can um, you clip a bit and, and put in my TV show. Uh, so I've been, we've been labeling and organizing that. Um, we've been also working on the like setting up the different set. Uh, so I want to be camera ready. So I have set at home, I have set at the office, uh, multi set because now I'm really putting my mind thinking like a producer. Uh, because even watching TV, I can see, okay, see how they do the lighting, uh, how they insert in different clip uh, to convey a certain message more clearly and more powerful. Uh, I'm, I'm paying attention to speaking slower and more clearly. Um, so with all that in mind, you know, do you have any other recommendation, recommendation or suggestion? What more do I need to do? Okay, well, by the way, congrats, Charles. And I have to say, you you follow instructions, you take action. I just like you. I love working with you. Okay, so I just want just want to say that, you know. Uh, so the the best thing we can do is to see results. Now, having said that, I want you to uh, start adding. You know, the the B rolls you brought back from Vietnam. Mm -hmm. Tell your story. You start building your your story folder because you want to start interjecting that into everything you do. A lot of what you learned was from your family, setting up the business, coming across. You know, a lot of what you're teaching is from your life lessons. So you want to start building your story folder, which, you know, we've talked about this before, but you want to be a lot more specific, like the, the clips that you wrote back, the B-rolls that we're going to be using in your ducky branding. Mm -hmm. uh, you want to have those categorized, and you want to be using those in your uh, – in your story too okay okay um other than that no you, you're 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 doing everything we just it's a it, you're just going into production at this point yeah because i realized um you know in in this testimonial for uh, being prepared right um, a couple of years ago i was invited to be on a radio show uh, so i you know didn't even uh, a friend of mine know the producer so they invited me to a uh, radio show and they told me it was supposed to be on like 15 minutes. Um, by the time I show up there, I found out it's not a radio show, it's actually, actually a TV show. And they look at me and they say, hey, it looked like you prepared because I was very well dressed and everything. And they say, hey, it's not 15 minutes, we actually do 40 minutes long. And so thank God I have, I was prepared, I have at least a, a certain training uh, so we actually carry through the, the show. So now I actually have the clip, you know, um, that I speak on international TV. I mean, it was actually Little Saigon TV. Uh, so it, it's, it's always great to be really prepared. And also, you know, how Joe Bauer taught me about uh, having like a one minute, I mean, a 30 second uh, soundbite, a one minute and the, even a, a three minute. So we've been, uh, so I've been formulating, rehearsing those, and I find out that really come to handy. Uh, because lately, you know, you know, people ask, well, why, why do you want to be on a TV show, right? Why do you want to carry a message? And to me, it's, it's part of the legacy. You know, the other day, uh, my son was asking me about purpose in life, right? 
And, you know, he was saying something like, oh, you know, I mean, as a parent, our purpose in life is to take care of uh, a kid. And I said, no, we actually do more than that. Uh, my purpose in life is to prepare you for life. And more importantly, to pass down the wisdom, right? And I look at that, you know, throughout years of our, I mean, our years of experience, I mean, how do we take that? So to me, it's always constantly, how do we take all my years of experience and take out the wisdom, take out the nugget and express in a way and in a certain chunk that they can, you know, consummate, right? And that's this is what we're doing when we create a TV show. We're taking years of our experience, our wisdom, to, and taking different clips and formulate it in a way and present it in a way that our viewer can consume and can get the message from get our, and and get our wisdom. So I think I begin to really um, get that message. Well said, Charles. Yeah, that, that's exactly what it is. And this is where nothing you create, uh, you know, is, is, is going to go to waste. You know, so that's why I want you guys to document everything you every every thought you have, you know, create things. And and I'm I'm actually blocking time to do the same thing. That I was actually going through a, a lot of the stuff that I've done over the years that I forgot that I actually did them. I'm like, oh my god, that was really good stuff. You know, so I'm going back in there looking at it because the lessons that I've learned along the way the mistakes I've made in business, the wise decisions that I made in business, the things I learned from my parents or from people I'm working with, things I, I learned from you guys, just, you know, uh, learning how to teach better, all, all those things that I, everything I'm sharing is like all this stuff is, is you know, coming along. And, and I know that all the different things that I've done, the different careers I've had, every everything I've learned plays a part in what we're doing. So when you start looking at it from that perspective, you start going back and like saying, huh, what did I learn there that I'm using here? Mm -hmm. you know? And all of a sudden you get all these thoughts of like, oh, I can, I can talk about this, I can talk about that. Then you can go back. For example, when I, I did this, when I was uh, working over there, here's what I tried and, you know, and how it, how it relates to this right now. Because when you start looking back, I mean, really looking back, there, is, there are no coincidences, there are no accidents, all the things I've done were different positions I've had, the successes, the failures, each one of them is playing a part in what I'm doing right now. And if I can see where and how, where they play, what they did, how it's affecting now, then I can actually start using that. And like you said, Charles, it's about passing on the wisdom, you know, what we've learned. And that's what people come to us for. It's, it's not just one thing. It's the combination of different things that make us who we are. And other people are teaching media training, but the way I'm teaching is the way I'm teaching. And some people are going to resonate uh, with me and others are going to resonate with somebody else. It's just, it's just showing up who you are is the most important part because all the people are we supposed to be serving and passing our wisdom on and, and the things that we're supposed to be learning, it just, it'll just all comes together. It's about trusting the process and just being our authentic self. And that's the most most attractive thing that we can do, the most powerful thing we can do for ourselves and the people we're supposed to serve. So that was that was just great stuff, Charles. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Nabi, you are on. You're muted. <laughs> Unmute yourself, please. I said I was muted. <laughs> And that was just wonderful things you just shared, I know. <laughs> okay. I'm muted for a reason. It, it's the best way to keep me quiet. Um, I, look, I, I really don't have any questions, Anne. I, I think I've participated in a couple of um, uh, interviews over the last uh, few weeks, and uh, one of the things that I find helpful is getting the people to send me their questions uh, or their show flow beforehand. Um, so that I can be prepared and having my bio ready so that I can send it to them. And then they just sit there and, you know, read that off for like half an hour and ha that's half the show gone. So um, uh, then we just move on. But it's interesting how some people will interpret what you've written and the way that they say it um, can make it sound a little bit different to what it's actually meant to be. So it, it's very hard to put 
information about yourself into um, other people's hands because it's like you're building yourself up to be this um, person. I, I try and remain humble as always, um, but uh, it just comes out as being a much bigger thing. I think it's just the presenters who are, you know, trying to inspire their audience into this person is fantastic. So, so that that's more the comment that I have rather than the question. Um, so I think you know if uh, if people are, are going to be interviewing people, you know, have the the questions and the show flow basically prepared to send out and make that person feel comfortable. Okay, actually, that's a great point you you brought up. I, I don't think I, I talked about this. Now, when you are sending your intro to people, make sure you're giving them only one sentence, you know, about you. And it should be things that you can't say about yourself, okay, when they're introducing you. My special guest is blank, and if you've been thinking about this, uh, and if you've been doing this, my special guest is a world-renowned, is a number one expert and things like that. You know, so you just one sentence. And then what you want them to do is you want them to ask you questions like, hey, how did you get to do, you know, how did you decide this? How did you get to be the number one or whatever? Then you go into, well, you know, I was doing this, I did that, I did that. So there's a few reasons for that. One is, uh, first, like you said, when you give it to them, they can turn it into whatever they want. And what happens then, you're giving them all the camera time. You want the camera time. So if you give them a sentence where they're positioning you as a foremost expert, world's leading expert or whatever on that particular thing, then they're positioning you. And then you can start saying things uh, about yourself in a way that's going to connect with the audience. Now, this is really, really important because if they're just reading off what you have written, they're like, well, Navi is this, and he did that, and he did that. It, 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 they're just rattling off stuff. There's no emotion in there. Yeah. And if people are just waiting for that to be over. And so there's a disconnect. But if you are the one who's talking about it, why you, you know, you became the expert you are, then you can actually customize the information the way you share for that particular audience. You have more control of it and you have more camera time. Okay, so this is really important. Also, when people are sending you their bios, um, I can tell you that they send me stuff that's a full page long. If I read what it was, it will be the entire show. Of course, I'm not going to do that. But what I do is like I, I take a look at their bio, and I was like, I pick out the top thing was that I can turn into a sentence. And my special guest is this, and now we'll tell them. It's like, look, I'm going to introduce you as this. Then I'm going to ask you, how did you get to be the world's leading? Then you can say, well, I did this, I did that, I did that. Ten years ago, I did this and that. You know, then it, you put the responsibility of, you know, presenting themselves on them, and you give them the camera time. So it makes it easier for you instead of just you sitting there reading everything because quite frankly, we have to read. We don't know enough about them. And some people, if you don't read exactly the way they've written it, they get upset. So rather than risk that and a disconnect and you know say something the wrong way, just say, look, I'm just going to position you as the world's expert and I'm really happy you're here. Now tell us, you know, I'm going to give the floor to you. And they're like, oh, thank you. Okay. That's how, that's, uh, it's a really important point that I didn't even bring up before. So thanks for, you know, remind me that, Nabi. That's what I'm here for. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you have, you have no other comments, no other questions, nothing? No, just a blank sheet. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, uh, we're doing quite well. It's, uh, we're almost at the end of the hour here. And let's see. Uh, I'm going to take a take a look at and uh, some chats. And let's see. I'm looking at. There, there don't seem to be any particular questions here that we haven't already answered. Okay. Well, we're doing good, aren't we? My goodness. Okay. So. Um, well, if, if there are final thoughts from each one of you, actually, you know, what I would like to do, this is kind of practicing, okay? This is the way I want you to, when you're doing your homework, you want to talk about something in particular that you got out of it. So I'm going to go to each one of you, and I want you to, like, 
briefly, 30 seconds or whatever, uh, what was a huge takeaway from today and how are you going to be using it? Okay? So practice how you're going to be creating the sound bites that I'm going to be using to promote you with. Okay? So there we go. And we're going to start off right from Barbara Wainwright. Okay, Barbara, you are on. Thank you. Yes, today what I learned is that we can repurpose our content that we've already created. There's a lot of it out there and we can repurpose go back, view it, find out what really works, what really clicks, what an important message is, and then we can capture that and talk about it in another video. And I love repurposing. It's really a great idea. Awesome. Thank you, Barbara. Okay, Charles, you are on. Yes, I mean, to, to me, like, you know, cooking, uh, like the different type of meal or gourmet meal, you know, you have a bunch of clip and and you're very clear of your audience and you want to present something, then you just put a different uh, clip like, you know, you're baking a cake or baking uh, a course or something. So, so I think that that, uh, that inspired me to, uh, uh, to be a great chef. Video. <laughs> <laughs> Video chef, okay. <laughs> I love it. Because I know it's, uh, it's uh, you know, uh, being on video, being on TV, I mean, the shelf life is for life, right? I mean, I actually watch your stuff. Like, I mean, that came from like 50, 60 years ago. And then sometimes when you watch it, you don't know that how old that was until, you know, you look at you, I go, oh my God, that was like 30, 40 years ago, man. But uh, the, the material, the content was great, so. Yeah, well, people don't change. Time just changes. Okay, Nabi, you are next. So what did you get out of today and how are you going to use it? Uh, look, I think uh, just basically as a soundbite, uh, keep it short and keep it brief. Keep it short and keep it brief. Okay, Tony, you are on. Well, I want to be whiny because Charles stole mine. <laughs> that's okay this is your 30 that. seconds <laughs> i was thinking exactly what he said that it's like a recipe and you just put these different components together and voila you've cooked a show okay thank you okay aziza you're on what did you get and how are you going to use it is this where you say they all stole mine <laughs> well Actually, what I really got out of today is, you know, as I put together the stream, I mean, the breakdown of all the things, I really loved it. That all my thoughts are coming out, like all the videos, all the interviews that has been featuring me online and on TV. Like I have them on YouTube and all the various places. So now I'm like so excited about how it can be put together and how it can become a whole new show. And I can be in my show showing me or showing the people that we have worked with and it's like over the years. So it's really exciting for me right now. And I think that's going to be very, very exciting uh, and empowering for me to put across whatever that work, like, you know, uh, come together. Thank you so much for that. Awesome. Okay, everybody. Well, um, today was all about how to make the camera love you and being your authentic self is it be yourself and uh you know that's that's the best thing you can do and uh, again in the, in the members area there's a lot of great training by jodina st john on you know appearing on camera and uh, getting into your natural voice there's some vocal training uh, as well as what to wear what what to avoid on camera and uh, uh how to apply makeup by uh, Hollywood makeup artist Dale Buck for women and men. So be sure to watch all that. And uh, let's see, those of you who, who are just watching us live, you definitely want to go join us and get that, get that program. So you can also get access to all that we're doing and create your TV show right along with us because we're launching our TV shows in January. Why not yours? Okay. So next week, it's going to be all about technology. It's all about creating your videos. I'm going to go uh, into how to use XSplit on different ways that I use. And I'm going to literally share my screen with you and show you what it does and how it does. And uh, so you too can begin using your webcams uh, the way they're supposed to be. And uh, I'll be talking about uh, 
how to where to set your lights and all kinds of cool things like that to get started okay so very exciting i know that with all that we're putting together and next week once you start uh, using xsplit to create your shows then it's production time and it's that's when the excitement starts when you start seeing the results of all your efforts okay everybody so i'm ann devere this is turn your show into cash today was module six and next week we're going to be talking about production and thank you for joining us it's been a pleasure i will see you next week okay bye bye